Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about the counter instructions in Studio 5000 for the Control Logix and Compact Logix PLC. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. For this video, we are using one of our PLC trainers. This is our Compact Logix trainer, and it's still wired for the Getting Started Guide. So let's start with a new program in Studio 5000, and we're going to be using a 1769 L16ER BB1B, and we'll just call that a counter. And then we're going to be using zero expansion modules. And then let's go ahead and go into our main program and let's go to our timer counter tab. Now we already have a video on the three timer instructions and look down in the description. There'll be a link to the whole series. So today we are going to talk mainly about the CTU, the CTD, and we're also going to go over the reset again. So let's go and bring down a CTU. And then let's bring another rung down and let's put the CTD in it. And then let's bring down another rung and we'll grab that reset. And let's call our counter first counter. And we'll go ahead and create a new one. And it'll be a data type of counter. And then we're going to use that same first counter in our CTD counter instruction. So unlike many instructions where you should only use an address one time in an output instruction, the counter instruction is a great example where you can use the same tag multiple times. And in fact, in this case, you should use the same tag multiple times. Because what we're going to do is we want these counters tied together. We want this first rung or rung zero to count up. And we want this to count down. So let's go ahead and add some conditions for it to count up and down. Let's go back to our favorites tab and let's bring down an examine on. And we are going to be looking at local colon one colon I dot data dot zero. And let's go ahead and add a description to that. That's going to be our green button. And then let's bring another one down to rung one. And this one will be our yellow button, which is local colon one colon I dot data dot one. We'll call that our yellow button. Then let's bring one more down. And let's use button four, which is our blue button. And that's going to be local colon one colon I dot data dot three. That'll be our blue button. And also that will go to the first counter that reset. So these first three rungs are all tied to that first counter. And let's go ahead and explore this first counter in the controller tags. So we have a couple of double integers and then we have a bunch of Boolean tags here. So we have a preset, which is very similar to what we saw in our timer. And this is the value that we want our counter to get to before it does something. Then we have our accumulated value and that is what the count value is currently at. Then we have a CU bit, a CD bit, a DN bit, an OV bit, and a UN bit. So we're gonna tie some of those bits to our lights just so we can understand exactly what they're doing. So first we need to put a preset value in. In fact, let's go back to our main routine here. And yeah, we're gonna put a preset value of five. Now put it in the CTU instruction, just so we can make sure we understand. The moment we put that value into their CTU, it also goes into the CTD. And that's because this preset is the exact same as this preset. And as we, when we get started, we'll see that accumulator right they're seeing right there is exact same as this accumulator right here. Okay, so now let's bring some rungs down so we can look at those other bits. So we'll go ahead and drag another rung down and let's drive and examine it falling down. And this one, let's look at that first counter dot 
and we can bring that down. Let's see what we got. We have a CU bit. We'll click that one. And let's bring down an output energize. And this is going to go to our green light, which is local colon one colon o dot data dot zero. So that will be our green light. And then let's just copy and paste that wrong. And let's change this to the CD bit. And let's change output zero to output one, which is our yellow light. So yellow light. And then let's paste it again. And this time let's look at the next bit down, which is going to be our DN bit. And we will go to the red light, which is output two. Red light. And then let's paste it again. And let's put in the next one, which is going to be our OV bit. And we'll put in output three, which is our blue light. Now we have one extra bit and yes, we only have four lights on the trainer. So let's go ahead and stick it down there at output four, even though we don't have anything wired currently to output four, it's gonna be just fine for this exercise. And that one is going to be the UN bit. All right, so you should end up with seven rungs. It looks like that. And let's go ahead and download this program. Now, if you need any help downloading your program or creating a program or you feel like I went through a lot of that really fast, we have a whole series down in the description where we've gone through creating basic programs, your basic bit instructions, how to configure ethernet drivers, USB drivers, serial drivers, pretty much the whole works up until now and beyond now. So check that out in the description. Okay, let's press our green button. All right, and when we press it, our green light comes on and also our accumulated value went up by one. Now, a couple things is I'm pressing and holding this button, but we only got one count on it. And that is because it only counts on the rise of the instructions preceding it. So the moment this green button is pressed, it's going to count by one. And it's going to use the CU bit to store and remember that it has counted. And right there, you can see the CU bit in rung three is what is turning on the green light. So the CU bit means that the instructions preceding the count up counter are true. We'll go ahead and let off of it. And the CU bit goes out. We're still holding at one count. We'll go ahead and press it again. And now the CU bit is back on, but our accumulated value is now two. And we can press it again, it's gonna be three. Press it again, it's gonna be four. Now let's go ahead and press the yellow button, which is tied to this countdown counter. And the moment we press it, the count is gonna go down to three. And it's subtracted one from our accumulated value. And the yellow light came on because the CD bit is on. So the CD bit means that the instructions preceding our count down counter are true. So let's go ahead and press the count up button back to four, and then let's press it one more time to get it to five. And now while I'm still holding it. Our green light is on because the CU bit is on, but now our red light is on. And that is because our DN or our done bit of the counter is true. And what the done bit says is that the accumulated value is greater than or equal to the preset value. Now let's go ahead and hit our green button again, just so we can see a count up counter will continue to count past its preset, which makes it a little different than a timer because a timer stops timing when its accumulated value is greater than or equal to its preset. So it doesn't work the same way. And the same if we sit here and we hit the count down, we can actually bring the counter into the negative direction and there's nothing wrong with that. Now for your application, there could be something wrong with it, but is in general, this counter will count up and it will count down as far as it can possibly count. Which brings us to these other bits down here. We have an OV bit 
and a UN bit. And what these are is these are overflow bits. So if we keep pressing this button, and we need to press it a long time, it's like two billion times, and we're gonna shortcut that, we're actually gonna modify our cumulative value. Let's go up to one of our counters, and let's go into the accumulative value, and let's put in 2,147,483,000 645. Again, you saw both accumulators change. Now let's press the green button again, and now we have 46. We press it again, we're gonna have 47. Now you need to pay really close attention when we press it again. So let's press it again, and it says 48. But if you look at the beginning here, now we have a negative. And what's happened is we've gone to the maximum value of a double integer, and we've rolled over to the very lowest value that you can have in a double integer. And that is signified by this blue light. That's what it means is it has rolled over from the highest value back to its lowest value. Now this is less of an issue than it was with say RS Logics 500 where counters could only count to 32,767. Back then, I mean, it, that's not that unusual for a machine part counter. So rollovers were a big deal. And I'm not saying they're not a big deal even though we can count to two billion, but they're less of a problem. So I don't get a lot of questions about rollovers in RS 5000. But we'll probably do a video on that and show how we can actually count beyond two billion in these situations. But if we press our yellow button, let's make sure we understand this part. We press the yellow button, the blue light went out, our negative sign went away, and we're back to 47 down here. And the same way, let's go ahead, while we have it right there, let's put a negative sign in front of our accumulated value. So we have a negative 2,147,483,647. And let's press the negative button. First, let's go down because we can't see this last one because we don't have a light wired to the UN. But all right, we're at negative 47. So I'm gonna press the yellow button. It's gonna take us to a negative 48. And we're fine there. Now let's press it again. In fact, let's go back up, make sure we saw that. All right, so we're at 48. Now we're gonna press it again. And now our UN bit is gonna be set, which is that underflow. And we are now at a positive value, the maximum value of the double integer. So that's what these last two bits are for. It is an overflow and an underflow for your counter. And then our three other bits, which are the ones that you'll mostly see used, are the CU, the CD, and the DN bit. And the CU bit simply says that the instructions preceding the count up counter are true. The CD bit says the instructions preceding this countdown counter are true. And the done bit says that our accumulated value is greater than or equal to our preset. Now we're in an interesting situation right now because our accumulated value is greater than or equal to our preset. But right now, we have this underflow bit set. So actually, if we right click it and toggle it, then our dumb bit's gonna come on. But we cleared out that overflow. So as long as this bit right here is set, your dumb bit will not be set. But that's a super rare situation. So don't worry too much over it. So there's one other instruction here that we actually haven't hit yet. Although we did hit it pretty well in the timer video is the reset, which we have tied to our blue button. And the reset button is gonna clear out our accumulated value and all of these bits down here. So if we hit our reset button, our done bit cleared, and yes, our accumulated value is now at zero. Also, I don't think I gave actually an example of why you would need a count up and a count down counter tied together, and they're very common. Let's say you have a machine part counter and you know it's automated and so good part, good part, good part, good part, good part, good part. Oh, got a quality issue on some inspection device that kicks it out, bad part, subtract it out. Good part, good part, bad part, good part, good part, good part, bad part. So there's a really very common example of why you would use the count up and count down counter to the same value. 
So if this video has been helpful, again, please hit that like button. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.